Right. Hi, everybody. I'm Kate Safin. I, um, I've been composting all my, my loo contents for the last eight years. Now, an admin of the compost toilets for boats and off-grid living. Martin? Hi, yeah, <clears throat> I'm Martin Doyle. Um, I currently work uh, for Woo Woo Waterless Toilets, who distribute separate Airhead and a few other brands in the UK. Um, prior to that, uh, from 2012 to 2008, I had my own business called The Little House Company, where I sold separators and made compost toilets. And from 2012 is when I first used, uh, first started using my own compost toilet. And I'm Compost John, aka John Cossum. Um, I'm a, a landlubber, don't have a boat, wouldn't mind, uh, and I'm quite mad about composting. I did uh, my dissertation for my degree back in the 90s on composting, and I'm what's called a master composter, and I teach people about composting, so I'm going to teach you a little bit. So, And I'm based in York, so uh, yes, that's me. Thanks, so Kate. we're all involved in different ways. So you've actually got quite a breadth of experience there with Martin's work with toilets, John's with composting and mine um, being a, a composter on a boat without a home mooring. And I'm going to hand over now to Martin, who is going to take us through more, in a sense, more than, than just the separating toilet most of us are familiar with, but the whole range of toilets that don't involve water. Yeah, thanks very much, Kate. Um, so um, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome. I hope you're all well and warm and aren't going to get blown away tomorrow with the uh, forecasted winds. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was to take you on a very, very quick presentation just to make sure that you, you are familiar with compost toilets versus composting toilets and what some of the differences are, because they can catch people out. And it is sort of quite important uh, to, um, uh, to know about those differences. So I'm just going to um, share this. So um, Kate, can you just nod and let me know that that's looking okay? Excellent, okay. So <clears throat> we're going to do, first of all, talk about different types of dry toilet. So you, you'll hear people interchangeably use, use words like dry toilet, waterless toilet, um, urine diverting toilets, separating toilets, uh, and you may sort of wonder what is the difference between them. So the first thing I want to talk about is the difference between a composting toilet as opposed to a compost toilet, because the difference actually is quite important and quite substantial, and people use the two words interchangeably. And I know that the company I work for at the moment is guilty of using both words because we have to for SEO purposes, because people don't know what they're searching for, although arguably Google will find it anyway. So. The first thing, let's first of all, let's look at composting toilets. So the primary thing about composting toilets is that essentially poo and probably we go into it and what comes out of it directly is compost. In other words, the whole process happens inside the toilet. So there's two ways of doing that. You either have um, quite big, physically big toilets um, so the toilet on the left that, that you can see on your screen where you've got twin chambers sort of below the ground, that essentially each chamber has to usually be able to hold a year's worth of contents to allow it to break down. And you use the first chamber, then you swap to the second chamber, leave the first one to compost. So they're obviously no good on a boat. The other way that you can have a composting toilet is by speeding up the composting process. And there are a number of toilets on the market. Uh, the one in the center is a particularly pretty looking toilet. Um, and these use a combination of agitation. So they're actually got mechanical things inside that get the air going and usually also heat as well to evaporate the urine off and to produce something which comes out the bottom after a few weeks, which they say is compost, but I would argue it isn't. I would say it's more desiccated because contents have been dried out the bugs have been killed because of the drying process. I wouldn't call it compost, but technically, I suppose, in some ways that they, they, they call them compost toilets. My main issue with these, and, and maybe there are people who use them who would argue otherwise, but they are very complicated and they consume a reasonable amount of energy. So I, I don't I wouldn't call them green at all, but they are around. Probably not suitable for boats, although I guess a few people may have tried them over the years. So that's the composting toilets. So then what is a compost toilet? 
Um, a compost toilet is much smaller and simpler because you are collecting the waste for a short period of time and then you're taking that waste in inverted commas we don't like to use the word waste but you're taking that material out and you're composting it outside the toilet so it means that the toilet itself is physically quite small you can have some really incredibly small compost toilets um, because you're composting outside so in other words the toilet is part of a system so whereas the composting toilet is the whole system start to finish a compost toilet is the collection end of a composting system. Compost toilets themselves can be broken down into a number of different types. Um, and this is my interpretation. You may want to add some extra uh, on here, but let's just talk about some of the very basic pros and cons because they all affect how you would compost uh, or some of the things you might have to do on the composting side, which is how it relates to what John's gonna talk about. So the most simplest type of toilet out there is, is what I call a bucket toilet. Um, or has been popularized most recently by a guy called Joe Jenkins, who wrote the Human Your Handbook. Effectively, it's a bucket with a toilet seat on, and you can press it up and make it whatever you like, but they are all in one toilet. So in other words, we and poo, liquids and solids, go inside the toilet. You use a cover material, um, so fine wood shavings, uh, sawdust from uh, you know, this, this type of things, basically a carbon based material each time you've used the toilet. And that carbon material acts as a cover and also reduces the, the odors. You've then got separating toilets with a fan. So by separating toilets, I mean the, the sort most of you are probably familiar with, which is when you look down the toilet seat, you've got a front part that catches the wee and a back part where the poo drops down into, into some sort of container. So those with a fan don't use any cover material. You've then got toilets typically with a fan and some sort of stirring mechanism. And I'll explain a bit more about these in a second. And then you've just got separating toilets that just use sawdust as a cover material. So if we look at the first one, um, the bucket toilet, the lovable loo, this is the one um, popularized by Joe Jenkins. Let's just have a look at some of the pluses and minuses. So number one, they're very simple. I mean, you can't get much simpler than a bucket with a toilet seat on the top. And, and that's literally all it is. And that's all it has to be. You can make them fancier, but that's what it is. They are very cheap you know it's a toilet seat in a bucket it's, it's that sort of cheap and you can box it in or not as the case may be one of the downsides for a mobile user um, is that they generate a lot of materials so because poo and we are going in they fill up very quickly um, urine we accounts for about 80 percent of the volume of what comes out of your body so it's about 80 80 20 20 percent by volume is solids about 80% is urine, more or less, depends on your diet and fluid intake. But that means they do fill up quite quickly. So you need a reasonable amount of space to do the composting to do that. So generally speaking, um, my take on this is that they're not suitable for mobile users or people that don't have access to land um, because of the amount, the volume that they will, they will generate. But they do produce fantastic compost because you're mixing everything together. And we've got some example pictures the top there, those are genuine lovable loose. And the bottom picture is a French company called Leco, Leco Pot, and they produce a variety of toilets. This one has got a sawdust store at the top, so it looks like a traditional toilet with a cistern in. Then you've got separated toilets with fans. Um, so the most obvious ones come to mind, and, and there are more. I'm not just picking out these, but we've got the separate tiny on the left, and we've got the Simplu there in, uh, on the right. And I know there's manufacturers such as Compost as well who make um, separating toilets that have a fan. Um, arguably, you don't need to use cover material, certainly with separates. I know because I've worked with the manufacturer since 2012, they say you don't need it. And, and I've had a separate and you don't need it. It's as simple as that. The ventilation system is very efficient on them, which takes care of all of the odors. Um, Simplu, I think they say you don't have to, but you can do if you want to. Um, so th the advantage of a separating toilet with a fan is it's very simple to use. You just sit in the toilet, do your business, walk away, that's it, job done. The second advantage, because you're not putting cover material in there, they fill up quite slowly because anything going in there is poo and toilet paper. So they do fill up quite slowly. So they, they last longer between empties. However, the downside is that they do require more insulation. So you've got to take a, a, a duct from a fan, a tube from a fan, which various sizes, 50 mil or 75 mil, 
outside of your boat somewhere. Um, so you've got to put a hole in your boat um, or run it perhaps through a carbon filter or something like that. So it's a bit more of an installation and probably a higher purchase price in the first place. Um, but some advantages. You then got toilets with uh, which separate and have got some sort of stirring mechanism. You've got on the left there is the, is the airhead, on the right is a, is a compost that do one with a stirrer. Um, the main advantage to the stirrer, from what I can understand about them, is that they, they reduce the odor through uh, mixing. So you usually start off by putting some sort of material coir, um, dry coir is, is popular, um, but it could be wood shavings, sawdust. And every time you've had a crap, you on the airhead, you turn a handle, on the compost, you press a button, and it sort of mixes the contents. So what it's doing is it's coating the fresh deposit with some of the dry material there, which helps reduce the odors, which helps reduce the, the, the need for ventilation, although they do have some ventilation. The other advantage is because it's mixing it, it's, it's spreading, it's evening that load out. You're not sort of hitting in one place all the time, getting a sort of poo mountain. It is sort of mixing all the contents around. Um, I'm not 100% convinced on the need to mix. Um, I know there are people who think it's very important. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that it is important. Um, and there are some reasons on the airhead, um, which are more to do with uh, it, using it over a long period of time when mixing becomes important, but I won't go into those. If you're living aboard, I, I don't think it actually needs it, but arguably it does. Um, right, and my computer won't go on to the next slide. Bear with me. Okay, there we go. So then you've got um, composting toilets uh, where you just use a cover material. So these can be anything we've got on the bottom left, um, strumpet and trollop toilets, which some of you will be familiar with. On the bottom right, we've got the separate privy, which is a, a urine diverter. And at the top there, we've got the uh, free range designs, front only urine separator. So these can be things that you make yourself um, uh, or you can buy them off the shelf. They're very simple and compact. Uh, they can be fancy if you want them to. They're easy to install and easy to manage. Um, you can buy them off the shelf. The only downside is for some people, they can be seen as being a little bit too rustic, a little bit too simple. Um, certainly when, you, you, when you're new to them, you, you have to get a, a sort of trial and error idea as to how much sawdust to use and you know too, too little and it will smell too much and you, you, you're using up a lot of the space that should be for, you know the, the feces and they, they fill up too quickly. Um, so that's a sort of an overview of the, um, the types of toilet as I see them um, that are out there. So when you're choosing a toilet, um, the most important aspect is to decide, you know, how, how you are going to um, deal with what comes out of the toilet. So the composting side. <clears throat> and you need to think about the overall experience for you as the maintainer of the toilet and also for the people who are using it, because that obviously might be different. If it's a family situation, I guess one person's going to be nominated as the person emptying the toilet. So for you, it might be that you don't want to empty it every three or four days. You want it to be every couple of weeks. Um, or for you, it might be that you don't want to be using sawdust. You might want to use a fan or something like that. So these are some of the things to think about um, in terms of the toilet itself. Um, but ultimately, you end up with a bucket of poo. Um, it may have sawdust in, it may have not. And, and really, that's the, you know, this is the start of the journey now. This is where it's interesting, I think, um, because John will tell us what happens. And it's, it's absolutely fascinating. So... Um, thanks. That's my part over with. I'm going to hand you over to John now. And I need to work out how to stop sharing the screen. So bear with me. And there we go. OK, I'm done. So, uh, John, do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, thank you. That, that was a really good quick run through the different sorts of composting and compost toilets. So that's great. Um, I have a very simple compost toilet. It's a, a secondhand commode that cost me a fiver from a charity shop. It's a brewing bucket, which is 25 litres. Um, I put human urine, urine, toilet paper and cover stroke soak. Uh, the, the cover material also soaks up the urine. And I use partly composted um, sawdust because the, if you put dry sawdust on, that helps uh, stop some of the smell coming through, but not entirely. Whereas if you put partly composted sawdust on, it acts as a biofilter and there are bacteria in the um, sawdust 
which actually stop the aroma coming through because they eat the long chain odor molecules, which is quite fascinating. So the basics of composting is you need um, a mixture of materials, some nitrogen rich and some carbon rich. And it's an active biological process mediated by fungi and bacteria, initially bacteria in, in our case. And then if you're using a, a woody cover material like sawdust or coir or uh, autumn leaves, then uh, the fungi will take over later in the process. Composting needs air. It's an aerobic process. And if compost doesn't get air, if it gets waterlogged or compacted too much, it gets anaerobic and you start to get anaerobic smells. Um, and when you're getting those unpleasant smells of a compost heap, then you may be getting methane, which is a greenhouse gas somewhat more potent than CO2. So you need to make sure that when you're composting, it has access to air. Um, and you do that by putting carbon rich material on and with a normal garden compost heap, you put sticks and stems and things that would allow air to get into the heap. Now, with a, a compost toilet um, of any sort, uh, you're you're going to. No, not any sort, the sorts that you'll be having on a, on a boat or a, a mobile home, you'll you'll be generating uh, some human manure, possibly with cover. Um, and that will need to be composted somewhere else. So um, I'm lucky. I have ordinary compost bins like the ones behind me, and I use three 330-litre um, compost bins, and each one takes 18 months to fill up. So then I fill up the next one, and then the next one, and when the third one is nearly full, the first one is down to about a third of its original volume. So in 18 months, I produce 100 litres of finished compost. And that is primarily because your poo is between 80 and 90 percent water and the water evaporates off. Another big loss from compost is the fact that the bacteria and fungi breathe oxygen and they breathe out CO2. So they take the, the goodies from the manure, from, from the woody material, from the toilet paper, from the urine, and they break that down into carbon dioxide and water, and they breathe out the CO2 like, like we do. And so some of the carbon that goes into the compost system will be breathed out by the organisms in there as CO2 and return to the atmosphere. And that's where it came from originally, when you have your cauliflower cheese, um that that cauliflower absorbed carbon dioxide from the air and when the bacteria break down your manure they return it to the air so it's a cyclical process um so what we need is enough moisture a balance of carbon and nitrogen um people may talk about hot and cold so most small compost bins are cold their ambient temperature and they'll be the roughly the same temperature as the environment they're in. But some of them, if there's enough volume, will warm up because each bacterial cell generates a tiny, tiny amount of heat. But when you've got a cubic meter of bacterial cells all generating heat, some compost heaps can reach 60 or even 80 degrees Celsius. It's not actually very good to get them too hot. Um, they've even been known to catch fire. Uh, so a warm compost heap will act more quickly and it'll rot down more quickly. So some people, the holy grail is to get them up to about 40 or 50 degrees C and then they rot down really quickly. Um, but don't worry if your compost bin is cold, you, you could end up with a, an insulated compost bin. There are some commercial ones available called hot bin um, and you could make your own out of a polystyrene fish box. And all you do is you put your material in that and um, you can stir it. Just make sure there's a drain on it so that there's any liquid can get out. Don't let rain get in. Wet it if it's too dry. Um, and then the difficulty for uh, somebody without a garden 
is where to legally put your finished compost. And um, I think what we're recommending is um, to find a friend with an allotment or, or a bit of land and to not just dump it behind a convenient hedge or on the just off the towpath. Don't, don't do that. It, it'll get get voters a bad name. You've got to really find somewhere to um, put your compost. Um, you could, if you're really lucky, put it straight into pots and grow yourself some salad. Um, this brings up the last point I'm going to make, which is about um, bacteria and health. Um, we, we, we do have um, bacteria coming out of our backsides that we don't want to go into our mouths. This is why we wash our hands after going to the toilet. Um, so the composting process um, will take long enough. It'll take six months or a year enough for the vast majority of enteric bacteria, the bacteria that's in your gut, to um, die off because they need the environment which they prefer, which is inside you. Um, and so after a certain amount of time, especially if there's elevated temperatures, these bacteria die off. And if you think about it, there's plenty of enteric bacteria flying around the environment anyway. Every time a bird plops on your roof, any time a, a mouse runs along and dribbles urine or, or drops a, a mouse dropping, that goes into the soil, that will land on a flower pot. And th there's lots of uh, enteric bacteria, you know, gut bacteria around in the, in the environment anyway. So it's not something that I would worry unduly about, but compost it for a good length of time. And um, after dealing with compost or, or any human manure materials, just wash your hands. I mean, it's sensible, isn't it? That is all I can think of, really. It's, it's so simple, is composting. So yeah, ha happy compost toilets. Cheers. Thank you, John and Martin. That was a, a wonderful summary of, um, of types and what happens. Uh, we're going to complete this section. So this now gives you a, a summary and pause. We're going to start a second recording. So if anybody wants to go on and hear more about the, the kind of questions that people brought up and answers from John and Martin, uh, that'll be in a separate section. So thank you for watching.